once again a good crowd here on hand at Northwest Lanes for our second match of the day. Pam Shinshang moving on to meet Robin Boskin. And Pam's going to get things started for us here in match number two. On the left hand lane, of course, Pam just rolled the 212 to defeat Nancy Fair. There she goes again. She starts off this one much like she ended the last one. Averaging just under 220 for her appearances on the telecast. 666, I'm told, which is just over 200. 223 average. Robin Boskin, on the other hand, has been really bowling well throughout the whole Cincinnati area over the last three months, Jen. Hey, and Robin bowled 211 average for five games to make it here. And as I said in the last game, she's probably the story of the year as far as women bowling goes. Well, she's, she has a very sound and disciplined game. She stays down at the line. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. You want to emulate somebody? Here you go. Stay down. Nice low reach. Oh, that is absolute perfection Textbook. in a delivery. Mm -hmm. And the, the great part is she didn't start bowling until she was 20. So she has come a long way in a short amount of time, yeah. but I know that's going to disgust her a little bit. So Robin opens in frame number one. Unfortunately, the discipline nature on her first ball is what you should see. Now, now on the spare shot, she stays more erect. She doesn't get down on the ball like the way she should and therefore creates the error. You must maintain that same discipline. Time after there. Stay down at the line but pulling the ball up short. Over correction for the other shot. It's well, I don't, I don't want to make a prediction here, but we saw the way Pam handled early opens from a tough competitor in Nancy Fair last game. Here's Robin with the potential of two opens in a row to start the game. Pam starts with a strike, as she's done every time. Oh, I'm glad you the brought scenarios. it up, because I was about to as well. You're right. The scenario is exactly the same as the last match. I know Robin expects better things of herself than that, so she'll have a seat and try to pull things back together here. Of course, Robin, the daughter-in-law of Bud Boskin, who we see here almost every week out supporting the show. It's true. By the way, Bud, I'd like me to remind you all that he has some renovations going on in his center. He's putting in a new artificial surface, and it's going to start in June, and it should be over about the end of the month. Bud runs Fairfield Lanes. Fairfield Lanes. A bowling clinic, you are seeing it. Pam is really showing you what discipline, execution, and a level head can really bring to to this game. Pam, Pam has impressed me a lot. Jen, I have not seen her until the telecast today, and is that because she's just now coming out of the ranks? Well, she, yeah, indeed. She's only been qualifying in the Queen this year. And uh, before that, she was always a good bowler. But I say that her speed has increased her game tremendously because she used to throw the ball a lot slower and arc it more. Now she's going for the more direct, hard-hitting line. Okay, the speed you're talking about is a plus, but on this particular delivery, watch the six pin, second one from the right-hand side of your screen. The speed actually sends Turner. it up. Well, it didn't even go up. It went around the belly of the 10. And she's missed a few of these. Let's see if she's learned it. Yeah, she makes it to the outside this time. So Pam has a seat after a strike and a spare. And that brings Robin Boskin up in the third frame. And Robin wants to get things moving here. Once again, we have an all-event city champion for Hamilton in 1990. Robin Boskin won it. She also won the single scratch championship. And she was the second last surviving woman in the 1989 Hoinkie Super Classic. And that's a tremendous feat in itself. 
just about every lady we have on this show claims several titles. Uh, That's true. It's an impressive list of credentials all these women have brought to the show. Well, traditionally, George, Cincinnati has yielded probably the finest crop of bowlers in the Midwest. Uh, women, juniors, men, we have had to take a back seat to no one in this part of the country as to groups of people accomplishing things. And Robin Boskin is just another example of that. Looked like a little sigh of relief there that she got the mark on the board and now maybe she can go back to work and put up a couple of strikes you starting know, on, here in the fourth. On that particular spare, Dave, you had a good point because she had a good knee bend on that spare, therefore allowed her to make it. Consistency is the key. You don't want to really go for the power on your spare balls, but you still want to maintain the same That's great it. shot. Yeah, great, great shot there going a little high. Actually, the better the shot, the harder the roll, and that's what caused leaving the four pin. But that's something you can work with. Robin, of course, has two little boys. Well, not so little anymore. Nick's eight and Tony's five, and they both bowl in a junior league at Fairfield Lanes. Watch the setup of Robin Boskin. Very disciplined underneath the ball. Now she'll come around it. Creates a good rotation. Good rotation. That That's what you want to see. You want to set up the same. You want to take the same amount of seconds for your setup. You want to think about all the same things, Jen. Consistency. That's, right. that's the key. And you know when you're on a good set, you're not thinking of anything. Your, your approach and everything just happens. Just time after time, the only thing you need to concentrate is on your mark. And that's where practice is going to help you. It's going to get the same approach every time. So all you need to concentrate on is that mark on the lane. Pam going high on the right-hand lane breaks down the split, leaving only the seven pin, a relatively easy spare. That ball looked like to me she hit the mark she's been hitting. I don't know what would, you, would have caused it to come up a little higher. but George, one of two things may be happening here. The, the condition will change as the match goes on. Or just a very slight change. Oh, no. Knowing it immediately. Knowing it immediately as she lets the ball go that it is a miss. Now watch this. No more than the ball is out of her hand slips off her hand the reaction is oh right there oh no I yeah. can't believe I did that and and you can't <laughs> I mean on your one spin one pin spare you cannot miss those you have to work on those much better shot a little more aggression there and it's that's a shame leaves the four seven well, indeed, it is a shame Pam missed that spare, but looking from our view, it's going to make it a lot more of an interesting match. Oh, I'm sure Pam's <laughs> glad to hear that, huh? <laughs> it's the truth. No, I understand. <clears throat> would have been nice to see you out there, Jen. Yes, indeed it would. <laughs> my parents and my poor grandmother. <laughs> Grandma, I love you dearly. Next year, I'll be there. And we'll be there, too, in just a few minutes as you join us for the conclusion of match number two. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Please don't go away. We're back and in the middle of match number two here. Lots of folks looking on at Northwest Lanes. Robin Boskin up in the fifth she finds herself smack in the middle of this match oh and she's going to handle it great there you go Robin she handled it great indeed the strike in the fifth trailing by 22 pins but she's got the strike up in the fifth whereas Pam Shinshang has a spare up in the fifth I guess technically you would say she trails by 12 with a chance to cut it to two. That's right. Let's see, I catch on to these mathematics. Intensity of the eyes. Oh, oh 
that's about as much of a wiggle you're going to get without that thing going over. Robin throws an absolutely perfect shot here, really gets down, stays through the ball, goes through it with a lot of revolution, but it just no deflection here at the end. Two pin going to the wall, coming off with just the wrong angle on the four pin. Could have very easily have been a double for Robin, and that would have gotten, gotten her right back in the match. As it is, it's still no one's match. A lot of paper left. Yes, sir. Well, she keeps herself together, converts the spare. And that brings up Pam Shinshang in the sixth. She's working on a spare in the fifth. And Pam, this might be, uh, well, she had a tough match last week where she had to go to work in the ninth and the tenth, which she did so well. And she's in another fairly tight one here. Yes. Wow. You said yes, Dave. I was thinking yes. No. <laughs> the ball is actually going to drive off too strong here at the end. It's, it, it's too good of a shot. The head pin's going to go back. Two pins. Second one from the middle side. There you see it going to the wall right now. It normally takes the seven out, but it is interfered with by the five. She missed it last time. And she says, not again. <laughs> That's right. She hammered it that time. That's the most important thing when you do miss a spare like that and make an error. The most important thing is, are you presented with that situation again? Correct it and justify it. 21 pins. You're looking at it. 21 pins with four frames to go. That's next to nothing. And with these two competitors, as well as they can bowl, it's all in the hands of Pam at this point. Lane number 13, Northwest. Stone, seven. Back-to-back -back sevens. This one even better than the last. Take a look at it here. Culprit on this ball is going to be the two pin again, right there going to the wall. And instead of going back and coming off the wall, taking out the seven, comes straight across. And Bad that, break. That excellent character she has shown the past two weeks as being severely tested here in this game. Those last two shots. But she pulls it out. And it's always a little easier to handle something like that when you are in the lead. It's when you're behind and really need it. You're beside yourself. Good point, John. You can accept the bad breaks or the seemingly bad breaks a lot better. And Robin Boskin at this point is knowing that she's not going to run away, but she has to start posting some X's. Great roll, great roll, great roll on that shot. Kicks out the 10 late and the six pin working overtime. When I say great roll, that means we're gonna see some pin action at the end of the shot. She's gonna hit her mark, is she? Deep knee bend, yes she does. Now watch the three pin, goes back, sends the six pin into the wall, love taps the 10 out. The winner of this match will move on to meet Jan, Jan Hill. Hill. Yes. Two-time champion the last two years. And as we said last week, she's going to try and equal the feat of Alan Runkle of making it three times in a row. No, 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 no. The great shot she made the frame before. This ball completely twirls around it. Watch her hand position on this one. Right here, she rotates around the ball too quickly. The extension looks good, but the thumb is out of position and the roll is not looking at it. She's, she wants it to go further left. It's not going to do it. And actually lucky only to leave the one pin spare. Exactly, Jen. And she'll convert that nicely. She'd have had that roll on the first ball, she would have struck. But Again, this game of ours, bowling, is, is an intricate game that, that you have to go out and practice. Your BPA Fun Center is available for you to come out and uh, do some practicing, and that will increase your scores. Robin knows that very well. Looking at the hubby behind her there. There you go. There you go. 
should actually be a triple for Pam. Of course, it doesn't really matter because it's not, but she still remains in the lead. Well, big strike here for Pam in the eighth and could be an even bigger one in the ninth. 20 pins separating the two right now. person you're looking at, Pam, is in the lead by those 20 pins. And with the strike working, she could make it 30 and just about put it out of reach. Big, big shot for Pam. Oh. Wow. In a Stay right there. In a critical situation, George, she throws what seems to be a good shot, but not really getting the good clean roll. The ball deflecting sharply as it enters the pocket, leaving the 5-10. Not unmakeable, but difficult. Percentages on this are about one out of seven. Look at this. Mm. She gave it a ride. But nevertheless, has the open frame in the ninth. Potential for Joanne, 193. Robin, 195. Should both players take it to the wall, Robin Boskin, as you can see, could win this match by two pins. But she must strike on this ball. It's close. Just missed. A little tentative on the release. She splits her mark in half. Let's see if we can pick it up here on the replay. Not quite the good strong roll you want to see, but watch your target. It's go It's there. One three pocket. Watch a deflection. The ball just jumping sharply to the right. Takes a six pin out. She wishes it could have rolled up. One more revolution. That ten pin would have been gone must make the spare and she does very nicely done Robin Boskin is in one pin lead if she should strike at this point and that one pin becomes very important because oh. should she double she's gonna p force Pam to do the same I'm, I'm sorry that is a mistake on my score sheet again that it, it, the strike would give her 154 it would put her nine pins behind but the strike here, very, very important, Jen. What do you think? That's it. Might be the best ball she's thrown. I think I'd agree with that, George. The good players are going to throw this kind of shot when they need them, leaving nothing on the, t the eyes. My goodness, look at the eyes. <laughs> they are intent on striking. The form is absolutely perfect. The ball needs no description. Those eyes never left the target. Is this it? This would do it. Oh, we got all kinds of possibilities now. Let's, let's send the statistician to the IBM and crank it out. I think if Pam Marks she can, uh, with any kind of count at all. She just needs a, well, she'll, she still will need a mark. Because right. Robin spares and make it 174. Pam having 163 up in the nine. She'll need at least 11 pins. Even on the national tour, you'll see a situation where the pros come up and all they need is a mark to win. All of a sudden, a mark is not as easy as it sounds. Do you Robin play safe? Certainly, Robin certainly knows the situation. Doesn't even want to watch this shot. I wouldn't play safe. I'd throw the same shot Pam's been throwing with consistency time well, after did. time. Yep. There it is. There she is. What a story is this girl, I'll tell you. My word. No safety stall on this one. She's going to go for the max. Might as well go for the win right here. Go for the juggler, George. What do you think? Well, she just didn't want to shoot one of those ten pins again. So <laughs> Ten in the pit, the every seven. pin doing its job. Or the seven, yeah. Although she straightened both them shots out. And I'll tell you, next match against Jan Hill, one of the finest women bowlers, it's going to be a good one. So Pam Shinsheng makes it four consecutive wins to move into our championship match on the Queen of Bowling Show.
She's going to finish with a 182 or 3, depending on what she does with this 10 pin. for Pam Shinshang. She moves on to our championship match against Jan Hill. We will be back with that championship match right after these messages.